It's time to break free from the 3D mind matrix. And we're gonna show you how. Hey Earth Angels, Melanie Beckler here. I'm so excited to have my dear friend Bridget Nielsen with me here today. We're going to talk about the 3D mind matrix and how you can break free. So Bridget is an incredible spiritual guide, seer, and light way shower for the spiritual community. And we talk a lot, we're actually friends in real life, <laughs> and talk about awakening and the journey. And we were actually just talking about how there's always levels and layers of the 3D matrix that can kind of continue to pull. So do you wanna maybe describe like what the 3D matrix is? Yes. Or what, what, why that's a thing? Yeah. Yeah, it feels like, so, I mean, we talk about 3D and 5D a lot in our community, right? right? And so the 3D is a construct in which keeps us bound from more of our boundless, expansive nature. And so there are programs embedded within our culture, within our belief systems, within everything that we do really in culture that doesn't work to keep us bound to, in a way, this dimension and physicality. And so realizing that and becoming aware of what is that and what is not that is so so helpful and for me the big indicator is the 3d mind matrix is something that takes your energy so it leaves you with less energy you might not notice it's really it could be really subtle but that which is not such things as nature is something that gives you energy right so that's a nice little indicator of what is the 3D mind matrix? Because it's like, well, is that a good program? Is it, a, is it not? You know, how do, how do we discern, right? Right, so the 3D mind matrix is like the mental or even astral, emotional yes. programs On all that levels. kind of lock us into these status quos or these like yes. pathways for creation that aren't necessarily in alignment with why our soul's here or our highest truth. Yes, exactly. And we can see that playing out on Earth where humans are becoming really destructive to each other and to nature. Right. And so that would be it in execution of, of that destruction. Right, of like, this is the way we've always done things, and there's like, yeah, belief systems that tie yes. into that as well, that the belief systems can kind of lock people into programs that, um, yeah, so it's really obvious on certain levels, like in big cities or like what do you think do you have any other examples of like what's a clear like matrix program i i mean honestly anything that starts to be uh hindrance to to humans so right. such things as like media or social media things that make people more depressed or make people feel more isolated or suicidal or things like which that. Which are a lot of things. Yeah, which are a lot of things. And, you know, even certain foods, like every layer mm. of our experience here could have, ha has elements of that. Right. Yeah, that made me think about how, like, I think we've talked before about when you zoom in on these different levels of yeah. reality when you look at any major system it starts to become apparent of all these things that are broken exactly but they're like perpetuated just because that's how we've always done it that's exactly. how we do it that's like the program operating yes so then in awakening there's like this initial wake up to whoa there are these programs whoa there is the 3d matrix yes yes and why am i doing this so oftentimes with the spiritual work, we do, we get intentional and really feel into ourselves and become really present when we're meditating or when we uh, dedicate that time. But then when we go out throughout the day, we're like, oh, we're eating this, I'm doing this job, I'm, you know, believing this certain thing. And we don't necessarily check in along the way of all the things in our life to go, why, why am I eating this? And where right. did this come from? And to go down the rabbit hole of where say all food comes from or I jump on Instagram and then I do this and why do we do this right and what is what is this doing for me because I know you do with your audience a lot of the the check-in to their state after their meditations right. and mm -hmm. such so it's like tuning in to how does this make me feel right? right this 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 say job or this construct connected to media or this like with those things you're ingesting in your life those programs you're running out those things you're doing why am i doing this how is this making me feel 
is this lessening my energy, taking away mm. my energy, taking me more off my path, or is this bringing me more energy, more life force, more soul direction? And so right. that's a nice little indicator system for every <laughs> everything in our world. Yeah, like of are you in a program yeah. doing things just because you do you're them. doing it, yeah. you don't know why, yes. but it's actually draining, or yes. are you like willing to break free from the program and listen to your heart or higher guidance as to like how to change up programs or create all new pathways and exactly one thing I feel like I've noticed a lot is in different communities yeah the overlay and I think it would be like like a super astral level overlay of collective consciousness <laughs> yeah like pulls in different directions. Totally. Like and and being sensitive, you can really notice it. Traveling. Yes. Like if you go to Vegas, it's like, whoa, I'm feeling this like I need to like look sexy and I need to like and it's like yes. wait, no, I don't actually care about that. Okay, that's this like mind program that I'm getting pulled into. Totally. So do you have any advice <laughs> for how to recognize that and then yeah. how to like break free of it? Yeah, that's such a great question and such a great observation. I think we, we find that a lot if we travel, right? Like yeah. You just said. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest thing for me is to get out of collective energy fields or mind matrix fields, which uh, have more holistic templates such as nature. Mm -hmm. So nature is the reset. It is the organic, positive, fifth dimensional energy that is cohesive with our life force with our totally. with everything that we want to be right and so getting out of say a city or getting out of those collective energy fields and getting into nature and then feeling who you are there what do you think there what soul impulses do you have there and then at that point going back in and then seeing what is that difference what what are those impulses that are coming up now for me once I'm back in it and so starting to discern what is the soul you versus what is the programs that you're uh, in by proxy of that energetic field. And so discerning that. And then once you can discern that, really cultivating a crazy, beautiful, sacred space of intentionality for your life. So say you still are in, you know, programmed areas because mm -hmm. certain areas do hold more a major intense. metro LA or New York yep. like there's these strong collective fields yes. that are just it's so easy to get pulled into them yes whereas Sedona not as much mm -hmm. right it's easier to stay in your own current and so if you are in some of those other fields which most people are around the yeah. world right where mm -hmm. populaces are then it's how do I create a life and do activities in my life that enhance. So it's really following that passion, that joy, what's going to bring me joy in my life, what's going to bring me light in my life. So doing fun activities that bring mm -hmm. that into your life, like you paint, you do yeah. so many different fun things. It could be music, it, it could be movement, it could be lots of different things that bring more light, of course, spiritual practices, um, and then having certain lifestyle design that also enhances your life right so making certain choices of like oh I really like this food or I like this group of people these things bring me more energy so it's creating your own energy bubble of of light and consciousness within that greater uh, construct of the programming and really solidifying that with every action you do and, and thought that you have to stay in it because it can yeah. easily sway you back in it you know the mind matrix if you're still in that physical location. Totally. It's it's a stronger pull if you're in it. So I, yeah. I totally agree with that about like getting out of yes. getting out of that grid that you're in. Because when you're in it, you may not be aware of it. Yes. But then unplugging from it, that's why when you go on like a vacation or something or go to, to nature, yes. there's this recharging yes. just from letting go of the old program. Yep. But what do you think, so what if someone's like, well, great, I'm not able to travel, yeah. I live in LA, I'm yeah. in quarantine, like, yeah. do you feel like there is a way that you can kind of still unplug a bit without actually, like, moving or leaving? There's definitely ways you can move mm -hmm. in that direction. It would be switching out that which doesn't serve you with what does serve you. Right. So, 
okay, it's like nighttime, I'm gonna binge on Netflix, and it's like, maybe you also like to do this other activity, and you're a musician, and you play your instrument instead, or have like a long conversation with one of your best friends. So even just those switch outs of things that maybe are more draining, the thing is, is if you're in proximity to all the mind matrix, to the electromagnetics, to all those d deeper things, it would, you need to be more vigilant. Yeah, totally. Right, you need to be right. more on it. Whereas you can yeah. kind of, like here we were talking about, I was, I'm like, I've been enjoying some Netflix and stuff and like <laughs> watching a lot of shows. I can get away with it more here. If right. I'm in another, if I'm in a city or something more dense, I have to be way more on it with everything that I do. So being more on it with your food, you know, getting those like greens and high vibrational foods in, right. and those kinds of things and switching out for more positive things. So really just starting with that attunement, like does this enhance, does this give me energy or does this take away energy and see like what could I do as an alternative and just start to think about it and those inspirations will start coming and that'll start building your field of light like that fortress within like the greater other energy field yeah. that will really start to help shift that. Cause that's what I did. I was in Los Angeles and I built my own little energy field within that. And then eventually there was nothing left for me to, there was no reason for me to be there mm -hmm. cause I wasn't getting anything from it on that level. So I think, I, I think that's a good point of also like if you are in a big city, don't fall into the trap of like judging yourself or like, um, judging this situation of like, oh, I'm, I'm low vibe because I live in a city or because I still have this job I don't like or something. Yeah. Like the, we're all souls on our individual journey at different stages. And I always feel like exactly what's happening in your life now, like is exactly what's required for you to grow. So yeah, so that the lessons of the present moment, like are the, are the opportunity to gain the mastery and Absolutely. And one thing that I learned uh, in that experience of, say, my living in Los Angeles in a big city is you can physically leave the location. Like, the, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I'm in now nature, away from the collective. But if you still have those chords or those astral programs attached to, you'll still play out those energies, even if you're not in the physical location. Totally. You'll have more availability, especially consciously, to tune in to a new frequency and more of your true self. But... It, while you're in those, say, more dense experiences or in the 3D mind matrix, freaking take advantage of it. Like, what programs does it feel like you need to play out? Like, there were certain people and, and that were like, I have to have the mansion. Like, right. I have to, you know, experience this certain thing or I need to do this. Then you need to go play that out or go experience it on some level or reconcile that before physically leaving. That's not going to be the full solution. There's a lot of right. people right now in Sedona coming from other cities and they're bringing the city with them. Totally. You know, and actually with, um, the whole current situation, Sedona's population is like blossoming right now. There's yeah. more people here than ever. And I yeah. have actually noticed the consciousness field of Sedona has shifted compared yes. to like what it was five years ago. Yes. And so then it's like, as, as new things coming up, come up, like check in of like, okay, do, okay. I suddenly feel this pull to whatever, do, do something. I need to grow a business bigger. And it's like, is that actually the soul inspiration, the yes. guidance of joy? Yes. Or is that just this like entrepreneurial program that's now around? And like, <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, so like that radical honesty with mm -hmm. self. Mm -hmm. And I think I've heard you talk before about the, like a kind of barometer of like, are you doing something like to look cool or for money or for sex appeal? Or like, is it really joy based? Yes. And it seems like that could be a helpful awareness thing as well of like, it, it does it truly light up your heart with joy or yes. are you doing it to try to appear a certain way? Yes. That appearance like is like right into the matrix and, and all that. Exactly. Like, where is this coming from? Like, yeah. why am I doing this? What is the motivational factor? Yeah, totally. And when you're in that space of say nature as an example of the freedom from that mind matrix, which is just more alignment with your true self, then that is the true space where you know that you're infinite 
and you then don't have to be motivated by those some same things that people in that programming are like totally. i need to do this thing to get all these things or to meet these people or to do all these things to be valuable so i've shared uh with my audience like how i recharge in nature yeah. but i'm curious would you like so how do, when you like <sighs> say you just were in la for a week and you're like in the craziness and then you go to Joshua Tree or something on the way home yeah. or you get back to Sedona and you're going to nature like yeah. is there a way that you approach nature or is it really just like being in that surrounding that's a good question um for Put me on the spot. <laughs> for me it is definitely immersion mm -hmm. so I find that with every you know 15 minutes every hour that passes there's a deeper yeah. settling and shifting that happens so there, I mean, depending on where I'm at, there can be a nice state change. So cold plunge, right? Mm -hmm. Like jumping like in water. <laughs> yeah, some kind of jumping in water or making a fire and letting like that fire burn off, you know, any energies in mm -hmm. your field. So using the elements to really shift the consciousness and move and clear and cleanse right. is, is definitely a deep way. But universally, immersive nature and sleeping in nature, those kinds of things are just, the, the, the amount of shift is way more than say, like 15 minutes every day. It's, for me, it's better to do like, say a whole day once a week. Mm, so that's, that for me has. Yeah, and most. getting deep. We've talked about yes. how nature like has thresholds. Of, yes. Like, if you're present longer, there's like new thresholds that open, new layers of unlocking and. Totally, yep. Yeah, and then I feel like we can't talk about breaking free from the 3D mind matrix without mentioning like meditation. Yes. So, let's see. What do I want to ask? About <laughs> meditation? Um how do you how do like do you, how do you find that meditation factors into your staying awake, staying unplugged, yeah. keeping from getting in those patterns and it is Meditation for me and what I've noticed for other people too is the compass mm -hmm. like is is the reset in the direction of the momentum that you're choosing to go. So the meditation is am I going to choose to remain conscious and open today or or not because is there another programming that's running saying I don't have time for that I just can going to keep going da, 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 da. Right. which is that mind matrix you know factoring in time or have to's or all those things when we know that there is always five minutes there is always 10 minutes to sit down and be present with yourself so for me it is a huge huge shifter to keep you on like the right path of totally. alignment with with everything in your day like it sets the the direction for everything yeah, definitely for me as well is like that it changes the tone yeah. of the day yes. by taking that internal stillness. And yes. I think it's like although we're spiritual beings in 3D, in 4D, in the yeah. physical matrix, we're at the same time still connected to our higher self, to the yeah. divine, to super consciousness. Yeah. So unplugging from the 3D matrix is not about like even becoming something different it's just changing the the overlap or association to where i'm more even more identified with my higher self and highest truth and that yeah. higher perspective versus being totally identified with keeping up with the joneses with <laughs> maintaining um the status quo in reality so i i do really like the idea of the compass as well yes because it repoints you to that infinite light the the higher divine perspective and definitely so yeah yeah so meditation yes. time in nature yes is there anything else that comes to mind for unplugging i mean those for me those are really like major yeah I mean, there's the things that you like transmutation of electromagnetics and toxins, you know, so cleansing, um, having things that help with your grid space and energetics. So there's those things to mitigate kind mm -hmm. of the energies and the programs, not as much media, not media before bed, like we were talking right. about yesterday, mm -hmm. like those kinds of things help. So those transmutational pieces and continuing to introduce joy. So like what freaking lights you up? Like yeah. make sure to do that. 
right? Because there's a lot of people that like, a decade can pass and for me too. And it's like, oh, I haven't danced or I haven't done this thing. So really keeping um, and incorporating those fun things into totally. life. And that brings that joy and light that, again, continues to propel you towards towards light. Yeah, being that being of love and freedom and openness and yeah, yeah allowing the synchronicity of life to guide you yes and cool well yeah. any final additions you want to share about unplugging from the matrix or i the last thing i would say is to continue to stay in your body mm. to continue to feel your body and like let because you do such an amazing job bringing that angel those angel frequencies to your audience and all of this good awareness about spiritual energies and I think just continuing to bring that down into the body. I think that's a really good point because there's an interesting trap in spirituality and that's tuning into like a spiritual program. Yes. But you're actually still in the matrix chasing this, I'm so spiritual, look at these crystals I wear, look, look at these events I'm going to. But if it's not actually like in alignment with your core vibration, it can actually not be all that beneficial yeah but if so that's where that joy barometer yes and being present in your body filling yourself up with light exactly is very powerful yeah and, and yeah stepping into the truth of letting your light blossom through your beautiful unique expression I think yes. that's one of the biggest things about programs is it's like fall monkey see monkey do like follow the yes. path of another and when really as light workers, as star seeds, you're here for a unique purpose. It totally. doesn't look like what I'm doing. It doesn't look like no. what Bridget's doing. It's, it's completely unique. Yeah. And that's very, very needed. It's, and I think that's yes. reflected in our work as well. Like in in one sense we kind of do similar things, yes. but in the in in the other sense it's like totally different. different. Yeah. Totally different because that that unique crystallization of the light through humans is totally different and beautiful and unique and breaking free from the matrix to come into your highest truth and expression. She's good. She's amazing, <laughs> right? That's why you follow her. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you haven't already met Bridget, which you've been missing out if you haven't, definitely <laughs> check out her channel here on YouTube as well. And then what is the best, is YouTube the best place for them to find you yeah. or where? Yeah, YouTube's the best. So Bridget Nielsen on YouTube and yeah, I think we're going to do a video on her channel as well. So you can look for that. Thank you so much for watching. Love, honor, and appreciate you. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Go check out Bridget's channel. <laughs> Thanks. Bye for now.